So we're going to look at something that's not a number pattern, but it's a visual pattern. It's a picture that's changing. Just take a look at the first two questions, okay? And then you guys are going to come together. But on your own, just give yourselves a little bit of time to really look at what this is, okay? What patterns you see here. Today we looked at a T-shaped problem. It's really just about pushing them to see as many different patterns as they can because the more patterns you identify, the, the better your prediction is going to be. So the series of questions that they answered today, which is, what patterns do you see? What are the next two figures look like? How would you describe what the tenth figure would look like? And then the 46th figure, what's that going to look like? The final question is going to be, how would you figure out the number of squares in any pattern? Right, and to start moving into variables. So that the idea is that, that algebra is a tool and algebraic thinking is a way of thinking. That's our way in. So that's why we're focusing on patterns to develop it as a way of thinking, not just a discrete set of tools. We're gonna to see how it all fits together. So what patterns do you see on the front here? How did you finish that sentence as the figure numbers change? So as it goes from figure one to figure two to figure three, as the figure numbers change, I notice that what? What did you guys notice? Give me some yeah. Fabio said it increased by three. What increased by three? Uh, the figures increased by three blocks each. This time four, then goes figures seven, then goes ten. The figures increase by three blocks each. Does everyone agree with that? There's lots of different ways, so let, but let's see. So he said the first figure has how many? Four. Four. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? So why is that a pattern? The figures increase by three blocks each. What do patterns help us do? Four plus three each time. It's four plus, four plus three I mean, is? Three. Like four plus three equals seven. Seven right. plus three equals ten. Right. And so what? Isn't three. And then what? Thirteen. So the next figure is going to have thirteen, right? Now, do we see the next figure? So how do we know? We're going to create it. You got to draw it out. But how do we know? How do we know our picture is correct? How do we know it's going to have thirteen? Because you add three more. Right, because we have this pattern. The pattern that he's seeing is that we're going to add three more, so we can use it to make a prediction. Add more boxes. To add put more boxes. Add more boxes to the top. What's that mean? So you make your do your drawing and add a box. So maybe start with that sentence starter. So as the figure numbers change, what do you notice changing about the top? It's getting higher. Okay. So. As the figure number changes, finish that thought. As the figure number changes, the box get higher. And can I do, Lashana, can I add her Renee's yeah. by one? So, how many are in the here? One. One or two, depending how you look at it. But so there's one on top. How many here? Two. Two here. So the next figure would have? Four. Would have four on top. Okay. Another way. I put more boxes were added and the T got bigger. Okay. So more boxes were added and the T got bigger. Good. What else? Yeah, Roxanne? All the boxes have equal amount of boxes except for that middle one. If you don't count the one that attaches the T, they all have the equal same amount of boxes. What do people think of that? Is that true for each one of these pictures? Well, when if you don't on count either side, I mean, like if you don't count side. the middle box that attaches the T, sorry, they all have the same amount of boxes. So let's let's maybe. You mean this is the box that you so, don't count? So if I don't count side, that, and if I don't count that, amount. and if I don't count that, that's what you're saying. So if I don't count, so, so Sandra, if I don't count the box that's colored in, do they all have the same amount of boxes? Yeah. What? What has the same? When we say each side, each side is even. You got one, two, one, two, one, two. So they, by they, we mean each each side, each each side. So 
This one is one, this one is one, this one is one. Yep. This one is two, this one is two, this one is two, this one is two. So it's kind of similar to what Lashana saw going up, but it's also one, 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 two, two, three, three. Okay. You keep adding one by each time. Okay. Good. What else? At the bottom, uh -huh. the first one is three. So the first one is three boxes. The second one is how many boxes across? One, two, three, four. I think it's five, five. Five, and this next one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how can we put that in words? And each one is adding one on top and two on the bottom. But let's stick with the bottom first. So, so as the figure number changes, say that again, Roxanne. The top one is adding one. But with, let's stick with this. The, it's adding two on each side. So as the figure I mean, number changes. On each side. So which one is the right pattern? Which one is the right pattern? They're all right. They all are, right? The idea with patterns, we're collecting information and using that information to make predictions. We don't know what information is going to be useful, right? You want to gather, see all the different patterns, as many different patterns as you can, because the more patterns you see, the more information you're going to have to make a better prediction. Okay? So if we, for example, only had one of these, we said the figures increase by three blocks each. So the next figure will have 13 blocks. Right? That's one pattern. Could the next figure look like this? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yep. There's your thirteen blocks. Could it, does this pattern, could this be the fourth one? No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I hear yeah, I hear no. So, yes, in the sense that, okay, so one pattern that we saw here is that the total number of boxes. Be would have 13. So this is my 13 here. Yeah, but it's not like a form of a T. It's not a pattern. It's a pattern. Right? So this, this is two, or it's one on top, then and it's two, two on, on top, then it's three on top. So does this follow that pattern? No. No. There's no what is on top. This doesn't, right? So that's the idea. Right? So all of those things have to be true. So that's why it's important to push. So what are all the different patterns? Because that's your list of things that have to be true when you're making the prediction. And when you're thinking about, is my prediction a good prediction? Is that the right way? Is that what it looks like? Because we're, we're, we're telling the future, right? But in ways that we can say, this is not what, the, what it looks like. To kind of just remember, there are five different ways that people saw, five different patterns that people had. And so let's see, I, I don't have enough, but I think you guys can, I think if you're in pairs, we'll be good. So take a look. When we started working on the upside down T problem, I had collected all of the different things that they had said, what they saw changing as the figure number changed. And so we did an activity where I had them match the written description of their classmates to a visualization. I drew a picture that tried to represent the way each of them was seeing it. It's been a class since we did it, and so I wanted to emerge them somehow back in the patterns. So then we did the next two figures, the fourth figure and the fifth figure, and then it's the tenth figure, and that's kind of where a lot of stuff starts to happen, because once you get to the tenth, you could draw it, but you're, you know, we're at the edge of kind of where we want to start thinking of other ways. 21 boxes across. Now she said to go to the 11th box, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then draw 10 boxes up. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the picture she said to draw. That's what I got. Is it right? Anybody have any ideas? Add three, five more times. Add three, five more times. Talk to me about what, you, what do you mean by that? Figure six will be 19. Ah, so we can build up. Yes. OK. So one, one way that, if we're going to do that, one way that's useful, a tool that's useful for doing that, is to kind of, is to set it up in a chart. What I wanted to do was a couple of things, and they both happened. One, I wanted to get the idea of a chart. Roxanne focused on that one where each figure has three more blocks than the one before it. 
And we had five, so we could figure out the 10 by just saying the six would have three more and the seventh would have three more, all the way down to the 10th. And so that's a good strategy that I wanted up. How many would be in the sixth figure? 19. 19 in the seventh figure? 22. 22. So 22, then 25, 25, 28, 31. So the tenth one should have 31. Could we use any of the other patterns that people saw to help us with this one? Everything is even. 10, 10, 10, 1, up, 1, So, okay, so I'll back it up and say that. But I also wanted to lead this towards generalization. Sabrina had me draw 21. And then on the 11th, go up 10. And what it ended up being was a picture. If you ignore the one in the middle, you've got 10, 10, and 10. And that was going to lead them to the generalization that we eventually got to, which is three times the figure number plus one. 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. Is 30 plus that one in the middle, mm -hmm. right? It's 31. Okay. So I want to know how many boxes would there be in the 99th figure? 99th figure. Take a minute, don't call it out, just take, take a minute to think about so it. So I asked them the 99th and I kind of gave them a couple minutes to just kind of use the picture that we had of the 10th. And then I had one of the students come up and show her strategy and it was great because she wrote both three times 99 plus 1 and 99 plus 99 plus 99 plus 1. And so we talked about where each of those numbers came from and why it was three of them. And then I said, okay, so what would you do for the 46th? For a series of numbers and I had them all written. So how about the 46th figure? The 46th is 139. How did you figure it out? So 3 times the 46 plus 1, or how, do, how can we write it this way? 46 plus 46. 46 plus 46 plus 46 plus 1. So if we want to do the 31st figure, if I wanted to know how many squares are in the 31st figure, how would you do it? 31 times 3. 31, the figure number times 3, plus 1. plus 1. As you look at these, what's changing and what's staying the same? So the, so the 3 and the plus 1 stay the same. And then what's changing? The figure number. The figure number. This, is that, the, the, this is the figure number, right? We asked for the 99th figure for the 10th figure, for the 46th figure. So if I, whatever number I give you, what are you going to tell me? Times, times it by three, three plus and then one. add one. So for any number. Yep. So does anybody know a way that you can, how do, we, how do I write it? I could write this. I could say multiply the figure number by three and add one. Is, there a, is there a short way to write this? A math way to write this? A scary way to write that? It's going to be three times something plus one, right? This is the part that's changing. What's another word for change? Change. Variation. Variation. Variant, right? When something changes, it varies. It changes from one to the other. Does that ring any bells? Does it sound like any math word maybe you've heard? Mm -hmm. Variable. It's a variable. One way to write this is I can say, well, take the figure number and any figure number you get, multiply it by 3 and add 1. Right? But that's a lot to say and certainly a lot to write. But if we think about what's staying the same and what's changing, what's staying the same is whatever the figure number is, what are we going to do to it? Times it by 3 or add it to itself 3 times. And plus 1. Add it to 1, right? And this is what we're going to do it. Right? So rather than saying any number, we can just pick, let's pick M, um, where M is the figure number. So whatever the figure number is, you're going to multiply it by 3, and you're going to add 1. I know adult education students struggle with, in, in terms of algebra, is there's lots of different uses of variables. But I also wanted to lead this towards generalization. I wanted to root it in this visual so that it could be rooted in something that's concrete because eventually what I want is for them to keep internalizing that question of what's changing and what's staying the same. When they look at the next picture, I want them to have that question.